Welcome to my off-grid life, in my vintage caravan with Edge and Luna. I believe in only carrying what truly matters in the metaphorical pocket of our lives, breaking free from financial burdens and shaping our existence entirely on our own terms. You could take me anywhere just as long as I'm with you. Finally, after six years renovating this 20-foot Viscount caravan, I'm ready to give you guys a van tour. Edge and Luna, my dogs here, and myself have been living in the van for five years and renovating it pretty much the whole time. There's still a few jobs here and there to do, but it's pretty much done. And without knowing those other jobs, you wouldn't even be able to pick that it's not actually finished. So I think we're ready to give you guys a van tour. So the first thing you guys are probably gonna notice in here is that it's quite breezy. My pendant light is swinging in the breeze and and all of the leaves on my plants are also blowing around. It's actually about 32 degrees Celsius outside and we're positioned up on a hill at the moment and we've got such a nice breeze that's able to flow through from all angles of the van because there's windows everywhere in here. Compared to a lot of other caravans, my windows actually open all the way up which allows it to get as much airflow as possible and I also have crim safe screens so they keep the bugs out, they keep criminals out and they also keep the dogs in occasionally when I use the caravan as a little dog kennel. So the kitchen is the first thing that catches your eye when you walk in. It's quite a large kitchen for a tiny home I think. I've never had an issue with storage or space here. I find it very comfortable to cook in and to clean up as well in. I have a pretty large sink. This is about 40 by 40 centimeters in diameter and it's pretty deep as well. At the moment I actually don't have running hot water in here so that's one of the things that I'm yet to actually finish in the van but I do have running cold water and 200 liters of fresh water underneath the caravan as well as an 85 liter grey water tank so for literally five years I didn't have running water and I was filling up a jerry can tipping it in the sink catching it in a bucket underneath and that's how I was washing dishes so now that I finally have running water it is a game changer and it makes living in the space so much more comfortable now when it comes to cooking I have a pretty simple setup it's literally a $40 gas stove from say Bunnings here in Australia now these are not supposed to be used inside so don't do what I'm doing I'm doing the wrong thing but when I do use it in here I understand the risks involved so I put it right next to a window so it's got ventilation and I never leave it going unattended I also have a Weber outside and a gas bottle in the drawbar box and occasionally I cook pizzas roast veggies and all sorts of other dishes and I use the Weber outside so over over here I like to keep my kitchen pretty minimalistic I have all of the items that I need all the time so I've got salt and pepper coffee like instant coffee and then also ground coffee to use in my Bellman espresso maker which is an amazing product in an upcoming episode I'm actually going to show you guys how I use that and I highly recommend this product to everyone especially if you're a coffee lover you live in a small space or even in a home these are just amazing. It literally produces coffee just like a coffee shop. I highly recommend this for a small space because it's actually really lightweight, pretty small and compact and perfect for living in a small space. The, the lids are actually screwed into the wood above and I just screw these down and then I'm able to access the content in there and then I just screw it back up really tight um, and then that's that's that. I don't know how long they're going to last with um, vibrating once I start traveling on the road. I've been warned that these might vibrate loose and smash so if that happens then I'll learn from it and um, I guess change them to something else. So for washing hands to save water because I am living off grid I actually just buy a waterless soap so pretty much like a hand sanitizer and so when I go to the bathroom 
or whatever I need to wash my hands I just literally squirt that on rub it in and then it's yeah pretty much sanitizer so waterless soap and it smells delicious and I just sit that in the kitchen at all times. Moving on to kitchen storage. So I've got these four cupboards here. Uh, this has actually changed recently. If you guys have been here a while, you might notice that this is now black, whereas before it was white. I just wanted to kind of, I don't know, freshen up the van. I felt like a change with the interior design and I'm really happy with the black cabinets. I feel like it kind of ties in the exterior design of the van with the interior. So under here, we've just got some pretty boring things, I guess. My rubbish. I've got this thing here that I put in the sink when I'm doing dishes to help dry my dishes. I've got all my clean cleaning cloths. I also use these biodegradable wipes all the time. This actually helps me conserve water because I can wipe a lot of my dishes off with this as well, especially if they're not too dirty or if they are really dirty to prevent my plumbing from getting blocked and that sort of thing with like oils and grease. I actually wipe them down with this first. I also use environmentally friendly products because my wastewater sometimes just runs straight out onto the lawn and I've got other random cleaning products in there spare garbage bags and I also have a Dyson vacuum cleaner which is on charge under there with a power point the only downside to these black cupboards is they actually seem to get dirty quite easily so I have to wipe them all the time and when the light comes through the door here you guys might even be able to see some marks on there um, they're just, you know, I can wipe them off, but they do mark easily. So I have to wipe these every day to keep them looking clean. So I hope you guys can still see me here. Now, all of these cupboards are definitely not <laughs> supposed to be used in a caravan. So of course these would just swing open when I'm traveling. So I'm going to actually put some kind of thing in there to stop that from happening. That's another job on my list of things to do. But at the moment I literally just like tie a zip tie around the cupboard doors here so like stuff will might move around in there but it can't open the cupboards these ones do open i did actually have some child proof locks on here to keep them shut while i'm moving but unfortunately in my recent trip to actually get to this property they were plastic and they literally just snapped off so i have to replace those with something i guess more heavy duty or actually get a proper um caravan lock drawer lock thing whatever you call it so in this drawer i've got all of my cutlery plates and medications dog medication deodorant toothbrush random things that i grab all the time and then if i can open this one <laughs> i'm on a little bit of a slant at the moment so these normally pop open but because the caravan is a little bit on an angle um they're harder to open so i have to put my fingers right underneath to get it open so yeah, it's not ideal at the moment and this is something I do have to adjust on here, but I'm working with it. So this is my pantry. So I've got like, you know, spare coffee. I've got like jarred foods that I cook with often. Pasta, my gas bottles for my little cooker up there. I've got pots and pans in here and also some chopping boards. So yeah, that's pretty much it for kitchen cupboards. So straight across from the kitchen, I actually have the dining room. And then if we step back further in the van, I have my wardrobe over here, which is literally just a cloth. I originally designed this um, just as, I guess, a makeshift thing where I was like, this will work for now and then I'll rebuild it and change it down the track. But to be honest, I think I'm just gonna keep it as is. I think that this timber trim around the wardrobe here kind of blends in with the rest of the timber in the van. And using this curtain as the door of the wardrobe, wardrobe uh, is actually really lightweight so and I don't think it looks too bad so below the wardrobe I actually have my fridge so that's just like I think it's a 50 liter or a 45 liter I'll figure that out and put it in the description below but yeah it's just a small little bushman's fridge I've had a lot of different fridges since living in the caravan I used to have an esky where I'd go and buy ice which I got over that very quickly because ice is actually expensive and if you don't invest in a really good quality esky then your ice is going to melt really quickly and you're going to end up buying like 
a lot of ice every single week so after having the esky i upgraded to a chest freezer and i just store that underneath the bed and would literally pull it out but i hadn't sort of set it up properly or designed it it started wearing the floor off as well because i was pulling it along the floor so eventually when i could afford it i upgraded to this bushman's fridge and i've had it for about two and a half years now and i've had no trouble with it at all absolutely love it and yeah i highly recommend a bushman's fridge Across from the wardrobe, I now have my shower and toilet. This is a space that's actually not finished yet, but it's so, so close. So I do have water running to this shower. Um, I have the toilet, which is functional, that's fine. I just have to finish waterproofing this space. So I'll put some pictures up on the screen here and a couple of little clips here of how the toilet actually works because I've filmed this before. I also put a hatch in the roof over here. So I recently cut that and that's going to be the ventilation for the shower when I'm running it so steam can sort of escape through the roof. But also I just have that open most of the time unless it's raining of course because it just helps with the airflow in the van and I do truly notice a significant difference since having a roof hatch because for five years I didn't have one in here and I just had the windows but now like say the windows are all open and I open the roof hatch I actually feel all this cold air like rush in or you know pulling the hot air out as well so I highly recommend a roof hatch if you guys are doing a build and then of course we have the bedroom with Mr Edge who's having a little snooze over here with the fan so let me bring the camera a bit closer and I'll show you the bedroom it's very hard filming ugh, in a small space because my camera isn't quite wide enough so this is my bedroom it's a double bed it's big enough for me I actually spend a lot of time in bed <laughs> sometimes I put my computer at the end of my bed and just watch movies in here and sometimes if I'm sick of actually sitting at a computer desk I'll put my computer in here so that I can do some work and I have a little tray that I fold out to put the mouse and the keyboard on and it's kind of like a little office in here so I can actually move around the van to do different activities which is actually a good thing in a small space because you want it to be versatile and not kind of I guess limiting what you can do in the space so yeah this is my bed not much to report here I have a mirror as you can see uh, above my bed which is hooked onto the wall that doesn't really seem to move when I'm traveling um, it's secured up there so it can't come off and I also have a new Sirocco fan in the corner which you guys can't see but I'll show you uh, it's just blowing nice cool air onto Edge and I and that's actually wired into the battery system so let's get out of the bedroom because there's really not much to show you in here and I'll show you my dining room so this is my dining area. This is a new addition. This space originally was actually my bathroom. So when I first built the caravan, the bathroom went, so this wall behind me is obviously the shower and toilet now. Sorry, I have a dog hair in my nose. <sighs> Life with border collies. So on the other side of this wall here is actually the shower and toilet. And this wall, if you imagine it coming all the way forward, pretty much towards you guys, right to where the door is, that is where the bathroom used to be so that whole space it literally took up I would say like a quarter of this entire caravan space and I had the toilet down this end and then the shower was pretty much where it still is now the reason I originally designed the bathroom to be so big is because I was thinking about if I ever sold the van what would make someone else want to buy it um, you want to have a comfortable bathroom somewhere that no matter what size somebody is they can fit comfortably in the shower and sit on the toilet and so I was kind of designing it for someone who might buy the van even though I'm literally not even considering selling it at all and so after having that space unfinished just sort of sitting there for years I decided you know what this is a wasted space let's rip it out and build a dining room and I have absolutely no regrets this has changed the entire vibe of the whole interior space all of my bench tops in the caravan are black butt timber and are quite heavy I was definitely warned against putting heavy timber in my van obviously for the weight distribution but something that I was sure of was that I didn't want my caravan looking like a traditional caravan because I'm not really a fan of their aesthetic and I wanted it to look more like a tiny home and so compromising on other things to allow me to have nice timber bench tops in here was worth it to me and in the end the weight distribution is actually perfect and it ended up not being an issue but in saying that I also am quite minimalistic and don't own a lot of stuff so this table actually can retract down 
and then I just put one of the cushions from the lounge here and this turns into a day bed. Um, down the track I might actually kind of customise it to extend it out so it would be the length of a single bed so I could sleep an adult comfortably. Underneath the bench seats I've actually got heaps of storage so under this bench seat, the longer one, that's where I put things like my broom, my vacuum cleaner, stick whatever you call it camera tripods those sorts of things that I don't necessarily need to access all the time and can just be shoved in there because obviously it's annoying to try and like pull all the cushions out and open it up and then underneath this one here it's easier to access and underneath where I'm sitting is actually where I put all my shoes so yeah that's pretty much it we've got the little window here we've got a block out blind on all windows in the caravan and I've also got overhead storage now this also <laughs> As you can see, it's just swinging open. This needs to be secured shut as well. So in here, I've got all my toiletries and also spare like clothes that don't need to be hung up. So track suits and um, pajamas and things like that. Nothing too exciting. This is the other end of my caravan. So where you guys are is obviously where the bed is. Down this end is my lounge room. So as you can see, the door is where all this light's pouring in from. So as you come in, you see the kitchen over there dining rooms over there, land rooms here, offices here and then we've got this big beautiful window here. So one thing that I love about the design of the interior here is that it's pretty open plan living so no matter where I'm sitting or say if I have a guest over no matter where anyone is sitting we're kind of all facing each other. I use my computer as well as like a TV so I watch movies or watch YouTube on here and so when that's playing if I'm either sitting here at the dining or cooking in the kitchen I'm kind of still able to turn and look at this. So this end of the van has actually gone through a bit of a, um, a redesign in recent months. I had to rip out this entire end of the van. So I've now installed extra storage above here. So that's where my toilet paper, a spare towel, bedding linen, my doona for when it's winter, that all goes up there, all pretty lightweight stuff. Above me over here, I've also got storage, which is where Starlink and my security modem is stored. And then up here as well is like a cupboard totally dedicated to my photography and videography gear. But the main reason this whole end of the van was redesigned was to store what's in here. So this is where my off-grid system is actually kept. So I'm actually gonna take these off with great difficulty, give me a minute. So this is like not the best design. It's very much just DIY. How do I build a sliding door cupboard? This is how I think I do it. That's pretty much how I built this. So I had the caravan weighed three times this year. The first time was to figure out what kind of repairs or upgrades I needed to take care of underneath the van on the chassis. And so the engineer inspected the van, created a report, I sent the van away, had all this amazing work done. So the whole exterior chassis has been reinforced. I have a new drawer bar, new hitch, handbrake, new jockey wheel, axle, suspension, brakes, wheels, everything under the van is basically new. It also received a 110 mil lift. I have a spare tire underneath where I'm sitting now and I have my water tanks under there. But all of that was redesigned based on the weight distribution. Now that's something that a lot of people don't seem to talk about when it comes to any kind of caravan, cargo van, tiny home build, is the weight distribution is so important and influences your entire design of the interior. All the materials you use, the way that you design the layout, everything is based on the weight distribution. So originally when I built the van out, this was just nothing. So I have a 3000 watt inverter, which you might be able to hear in the background there. That's it doing its thing. When these cupboard doors are on, you can't actually hear that. I have a BC-DC charger up here, which is kind of the battery management system for it all. I have a fuse box in there. I've got up here a little screen, which I don't know, allows me to change settings and see how much power is coming into the batteries and how much is going out, all that sort of stuff. And I have two 140 amp hour deep cycle batteries here. So this whole cupboard was built to house the off-grid system and this is where I needed that weight to actually sit based on the second weighing of the caravan. And then we also figured out where to put the solar panels on the roof. So I actually work as a family and wedding portrait photographer and I create this YouTube content. I sit at my computer a lot. 
So I needed an office. I used to actually just sit in my bed with a little tray and my laptop on it, but I actually found that was, um, although comfortable sometimes, it wasn't good for my body long term because I was not really sitting in the best positions and I actually noticed that I'd sit with my legs crossed a lot of the time in bed and I started to get really sore and tight hips so I decided it's time to actually have an office and as I said this also acts as a bit of a TV so this is just here permanently for me to be able to watch movies or do whatever I need to do on here. I actually also use this to speak to my family say my nana or my dad um, on FaceTime so I have a little webcam here and I can actually turn that on they can see my whole caravan and I can just like sit down or cook dinner and speak to my family so maybe one day when I get confident enough I'll be able to use this to live stream and speak to you guys on YouTube up here I have a shelf with all of my cameras it's missing one camera and one lens because I'm using it over there at the moment but I kind of liked this as a bit of like I don't know artwork on the wall this is the first camera I ever bought and what started my career and this camera essentially paid for this entire caravan and the life that I'm living today so that's why I thought why not have it all on display because this is what's funded this whole lifestyle and I can actually see the evolution of this was my first camera, my second, third, and then the one filming at the moment usually sits here. And it's kind of the evolution of my career as well, going from just photo to now videography as well. Uh, yeah, and I also like having this all out because it's easy to grab. As I said, sometimes, you know, I'll be working like right now and I need to grab another lens and it's just there and I just grab it and put it on. You guys also might be wondering, Amy, this is a caravan. It's a house that moves. How on earth do you move the caravan with all of this stuff sitting everywhere you might think that it's actually a really long process to pack everything down but I will demonstrate shortly how I do that it's really not that hard all of this stuff goes into my camera bag which is sitting behind me here all the plants go into the sink the pendant light hanging over the dining just screws out and goes into a box in the cupboard and then I hook the cord up simple as that and then that's the whole interior done. So before we go outside, I just wanted to show you guys my windows. So as I said, I have crimp safe screens on all of the windows, which allows me to keep them open 24 seven during the warmer months to keep bugs outside, criminals outside, and also keep the dogs in. So it pretty much acts as like a giant dog kennel in here. So when I first moved into the caravan as well, I had to invest in some heavy window tint. I actually found that people are very curious about someone living in a caravan and whenever people walk past they peer in forgetting that this small space is where i go to the toilet where i get changed where i sleep this is a very private personal space at times and so you need to have that privacy so i had to get all of the windows heavily tinted so i can still see out but when you're actually outside you can't see in at all but at night time you can see in so that's why i recently before venturing onto the road had to invest in some block out blinds so this is going to blow around a bit because the wind's coming in so normally let me do it correctly if I shut this and then I can sh pull the blind down so at night time you literally cannot see in uh, people who have arrived at my house at night time when I've had it all closed up have thought I'm asleep or not home and then when they've knocked on the door I've rolled the curtain up and they can't believe that the lights are actually on inside that's how efficient these are these are also great for temperature control so having the windows tinted and having these block out blinds I personally find helps reduce the heat inside and I guess in winter as well um, the, these block out blinds might also help with insulation as well when I received my caravan back from having the chassis build done, I was able to actually purchase and install this drawbar box, which is amazing. It pretty much acts like a garage for me. So I've got inside this middle compartment my gas bottle for my Weber, and it'll also be my gas bottle shortly for my instantaneous gas hot water system, which I also recently installed. However, it's not actually set up yet. It doesn't have any gas going to it, hence why I don't have hot water yet. So in here we've got the gas bottle. I also put dog food in here we've got fresh water hoses silage hose power cables if I ever need to plug into mains power that sort of thing 
We've got on this side the Weber barbecue, so that actually pulls out on a drawer. And on the other side, I have other random things stored like dog brushes, dog leads, uh, camping chairs, camping table. What else is in there? Just like random things that you need. But in saying that, I am still pretty minimalistic, so I don't have that much stuff. Now, another thing this week that I actually had to buy was this. So this is called a trailer mate. It's a hydraulic jockey wheel. At the moment it doesn't have the wheel on the bottom of it because I've put this other plate thing on. I'm not sure of its technical name. And there's actually a lever that goes into this hole here and so you literally without any kind of strength just like push the lever down and it lifts the van up. Um, and then I have this little switch here that I can turn to and you have to be very careful and do it slowly and then it just sort of makes the whole caravan go down. So I think that my windows might look a little bit dirty. I've actually noticed since living in this paddock and driving the van around here, it creates a lot of dust. It's very dry at the moment. So the van is very dirty. So excuse the windows here. I would have liked to have it all clean and polished for this video, but unfortunately that's not the reality of this lifestyle, I guess. So as you can see here, you cannot see through these windows. And that's what I was meaning about the window tint, um, how you can see out, but you can't see in. Anyway, let's go around the side. So I can actually hear a storm rolling in at the moment. So I'll have to wrap this video up, I guess, and bring Starlink in before the storm hits because I saw uh, on a YouTube video that if you leave your Starlink satellite dish out in a lightning storm, it can break. So every time there's a storm or if I'm actually just not using Starlink, I bring it inside or store it underneath the van just to keep it safe. So I've got this little outdoor setting here. This is actually not complete yet. I've got a few more items coming which will um, make this space much more enjoyable. But yeah, I've just got this simple little chair. It's pretty much just me, so I only need one. This table here to put my coffee on or have some food on. So in the background here, you can also see my electric e-bike. That is a Super 73 RXE and it is amazing. I bring it everywhere with me. It just goes on the back of the ute. I've got a dirt bike ramp that I use to get it up on the ute and um, I just secure, secure it to the dog cage. Underneath the van here, I also store my spare portable solar panels. Um, they're usually on the back of the ute, but because I've been here for about a week, I decided just to take everything off the car and just put it under the van here. So under there, I've got the, um, the ramps for the bike to get on the car, a ramp for the dogs also to get in the car because Edge is getting a little bit old now. And I've got my 200 watt portable solar panel too for if it was cloudy or if I needed to park under trees and the solar on the roof wasn't efficient then I could actually pull that out and get some extra solar. So as you guys have seen I have Starlink internet, amazing. I also have a video surveillance system in the van so that's obviously good for security but also when I go out and leave the dogs in the caravan using it as a kennel I'm able to talk to them and see them and it sends me alerts if they're like distressed or making any noise and that is possible because of Starlink. So here I am in the middle of nowhere literally living off the grid with 200 litres of water with my solar panels absolutely no problem at all and I have internet like it's just unbelievable but it has taken me six years to get to this point a lot of trial and error a lot of wasted money <laughs> but a lot of lessons along the way and I hope that on my channel and the way that I've designed my build and how I've set everything up can kind of inspire you guys and influence you to make the right decisions I guess when it comes to your design so that you don't waste money and that you can just kind of do things right from the beginning but also in saying that I guess I'm the perfect example of you don't have to have everything perfect from the beginning. You can sort of, I guess, make some sacrifices and sort of just pay for things and invest in things as you can afford it along the way. Thank you for watching our van tour. If you guys have any questions or I've missed anything, please comment below. Hit the subscribe button if you'd like to because uh, we'd really appreciate that. And also if you guys want to financially support our video production, you can become a patron. And that's all linked below in the description. For the cost of a cup of coffee a month, you can actually help financially support my video production. And um, I guess fund our lifestyle moving forward because I do have a goal to travel Australia in my van with my baby. Good boy. And... Um, I can't really do that yet because my business is based here and until I can kind of, I guess, earn 
enough money from creating content like this I can't really leave this area so I'm working on that and I'll talk about that more in my upcoming episodes but yeah so if you guys feel like you can afford to support us on Patreon we would really appreciate it but if not that doesn't matter just click subscribe it's free and um, yeah we'd appreciate it I hope you guys are well wherever you are in the world and we will see you in our next episode